Hey everybody, Miss Hattie here. Happy Thursday to you, or Friday, or Saturday, or whatever day you end up watching this video. Um, it is our third week of doing a science experiment together from home. Together from home. I love that. Um, and let's see, it's been, it's been a really nice week for us. We've been keeping ourselves very busy, and I hope you are too. I hope you're filling your time with lots of fun activities. Let's see, what have we been doing over here? Well, one of the things we did was yesterday it was so warm that we were outside having a water fight. Can you believe that? Because today it's snowing. Crazy. Crazy? That's springtime, right? Some days it's super warm, some days it's cold. You never know what you're going to get. And then let's see, the other thing we've been doing, I thought of it because I can see it behind me. I'm going to tilt to the side. We've been building a village out of boxes. Can you see it there? And lots of recycled material, actually, not just boxes. Um, so there we have it. So you can see kind of the red grocery store. And then that's the uh, yellow apartment building. And I think the white one is a pet store, they told me. My favorite part of the town is sitting right here. So let me show you up close. It's the, the school bus. I think it's so cute. Um, I really like this character back here who's reading a book because that's what I usually do on the bus. So I think this one was inspired by me. And my kids, when they made it, I like this feature. They made it so that the characters could move. So right now this guy gets to drive the bus. But if somebody else wants a turn or if he just needs a break, you can take him out and move him to a different seat and somebody can take over. There's all these little slots back here so that the characters can change. We have a lot of characters for the town, actually. You can't see them here, but this is only part of the town. It's huge. Maybe that's something you could do. If you had some boxes or other recycled materials at home, you could make your own village, okay? All right, let's see. And then the other thing we've been doing is we have been getting ready for Easter. So my family celebrates Easter. If you do too, then the Sunday, um, I hope you have a really nice Easter with your family. Or maybe your family celebrated Passover last night. And if that's the case, um, I hope you had a nice celebration. And then maybe you do neither. And that's that's great too. Happy, happy um, springtime to you. Lots of things to celebrate. But we do celebrate Easter. And um, what we've been doing is we've been making some eggs. Usually we just take real eggs and we dye them with the food coloring. But this year we just didn't have enough eggs. So we um, made salto eggs. Now salto is something you can make at home. It's really easy. It's just flour and salt and water. And then you cut it into a shape and you bake it. So we cut ours into the shape of eggs. And then after they were done baking them, we painted them so that they would look, they'd resemble a, an Easter egg a little bit. So there's one of them. I like that one. And then, I mean, the shape is, you know, but you can still tell that's an egg, right? I think that's okay. This is actually my favorite. Looks like a little chicken. <laughs> I think that one's so cute. But anyways, that's something you could do. You could make salt dough at home if you have some time. It's flour, salt, water, and then you bake it. Very easy. Very fun. Or if you have some time, you could do a science experiment. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to do our final water experiment. This is it. No more water experiments after this. Okay, we've done four. Um, let me remind you what we've done with water so far. So while we were still in the classroom at the rainbow table together, we did absorbing. What absorbs or soaks up water? And then our first experiment from home, we looked at what dissolves water. And then last week, we looked at sinking and floating, but we added that extra element. We changed the density of the water, right? And we found that when we did that, items that used to float at the top, we could get them to sink to the bottom. So today we're gonna to do our final water experiment, okay? This is it. Next week I feel like we need to build something or launch something, I'm not sure. We'll see what my mood is like next week, okay? But today it's just our final water experiment. So you guessed it, what do you think we're gonna need? We're gonna need water. So get, I'm sure at this point you can easily find your pitcher that you can pour with your water. Um, and we're gonna need a cup. Now this time, it's gonna be important that you, can, that you find a cup that you can see through. That's transparent. Before I said it didn't matter, but for this one, it really does, okay? So see if you can find a cup that you can see all the way through. Water, cup, and our trusty spoon, okay? So, 
The experiment we're going to do today is called the Dancing Raisin Experiment. It's a very popular experiment. I bet a bunch of you have tried it before. And if you have, that's you should still do it again with us. Because sometimes when you do an experiment another time, a second time, you notice something that you didn't notice the first time. Or you can try different factors that you might not have tried the first time. So even if you've done this before, maybe give it another try and see what you know, notice this time. And if you've never done this before, well then... It's really fun and it's very easy. You'll be able to do it in like two minutes, okay? So you have your water and your cup and your spoon. Now dancing raisins, that's right, we need obviously raisins, okay? I gotta tell you a secret, I don't really like raisins. My kids love them. Most people love them. They're not my favorite thing, so I am fine using them for a science experiment, okay? Now, what we need to do this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna Let's do it this way. I'm gonna first pour our water into the cup, okay? You don't want it all the way to the tippy top. You want it about halfway full. And then you're going to make a prediction. Are the raisins gonna sink or float? Okay, make your guess. So here I have a couple raisins. I have three raisins. I'm gonna drop them in. Do you have your guess? I do too. Let's see if we were right. Yep, they sank. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna pour our water back into their pitcher. Okay, so what we're gonna do this time, last time we tried to get things that normally float to sink to the bottom. This time we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna see if we can get those raisins, which sink, to float at the top. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna make our water bubbly. Now a lot of people, when they do this experiment, they just take bubbly water. So if you had bubbly water or a pop or soda at home, you could do this by just opening it up and pouring it in, and there you have it, bubbly water. But that's, that's too easy for you, right? We know that you're excellent at experiments, so you need, you need it to be a little more challenging. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna need two more ingredients, okay? You're gonna need baking soda, if you have this at your house, and you're gonna need vinegar. Now, I'm going to show you. This is vinegar, but now I'm going to pour it into a smaller bottle because this is way too heavy for you to pour. So when you find your vinegar at home, put it into something where you can pour it all by yourself, okay? So I'm going to pour mine into this smaller cup. Okay, so now we're going to do the experiment again. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so again, you take your water and we pour it halfway in our cup okay and this time before we put the raisins in what we're going to do is we're going to dissolve mm -hmm, there's that word again we're going to dissolve some baking soda into our water so I have a little spoon this time and I'm just going to take a big scoop of the baking soda okay, and I'm going to dissolve it into my water there it goes you can see when you first put it in, it makes your water very cloudy. But if I just keep stirring, it should dissolve and the water should become crystal clear again. I used warm water this time. You could use warm or cold. You could use both and see which one makes the baking soda dissolve more quickly. All right, we're almost there. You can start to see my spoon. Okay, let's see if I stop stirring. <clears throat> okay. Right, so you can see through again. You can see my green shirt through there. You could see my fingers. You should have you ever looked at like your fingers through a cup? Do you notice how it changes? What how your fingers look? You should give it a try. Okay, that's a side experiment. So there we go. Our baking soda is now dissolved in our water. So we've changed the density, right? So last time when we dissolved salt in here, we were able to get things to sink to the bottom. I wonder if it'll change what happens to the raisins this time, just by dissolving some baking soda in there. So get your raisins. You don't want a huge number. You don't want to do a huge handful, it'll get too crowded. So maybe if you're three, count three raisins, or if you're four, four raisins, or five, or just pick a number. I'm gonna put six. I'm not six, but I'm not telling you how old I am, so I'm just gonna put six raisins in there, okay? All right, let's see if it changes, just by dissolving the baking soda. Nope, they still sink. Okay, 
So now we have one final ingredient that we're going to add, and that is our vinegar. Now, do you remember what happens when we mix vinegar and baking soda? We do it a lot in the science room. Usually we also have color. It makes bubbles, right? It makes bubbles. We've done, people call it a volcano. That's not how volcanoes work, but we call it a volcano. It's super fun, okay? So here we go. So we're gonna take some vinegar, not too much, not too much, and you're gonna pour the vinegar in there, and we're gonna hope we're gonna make enough bubbles that they make the raisins float. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Okay, wait, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay, so, oh, could you see all the bubbles when I first poured it in? Well, if you couldn't, when you do it at home, you'll have a much better view of it. Okay, so you can see it pulled all my raisins to the top. They were all at the bottom and now, they're at the top, but they're not just at the top, right? They're kind of moving up and down, and up and down. That's why people call it the dancing raisin experiment, because they move throughout the cup. They go up and down. Now, it's hard to see why that's happening over the screen, right? But when you do it at home, it'll be obvious. What's happening right now is all those bubbles that we made are grabbing onto the raisins and they're lifting them to the top. They're making the raisins buoyant. Can you say that word buoyant, right? So they're helping them float at the top. You have something, maybe if you go to the pool, you wear something like this. This My kids used to wear this at the pool. They don't anymore. Do you have something like this? Water wings or a floaty, some people call it, right? This helps you float at the top of the water, right? And not sink to the bottom. The bubbles are doing the same thing. They're helping the raisins float at the top. But when the raisin gets to the top of the water, the bubble pops and then goes into the air and then the raisin sinks back down to the bottom. And when it sinks back down to the bottom, another bubble grabs it and lifts it back up to the top, makes it buoyant, and then the bubble pops and comes down again. So we made carbon dioxide. That's the bubbles in there, it's a gas. And it grabs onto the raisins and makes them buoyant and moves them to the top, up and down. Now when you do this at home, you can see how long this lasts. Once all the bubbles are used up, the raisins, the raisins should sink to the bottom and stay there. You can try other things too. It usually works really well with something small. Raisins work really well because they have all those wrinkles that the bubbles can attach to. But you know what else works really great? Is what raisins are made from, grapes. Right, so a grape is just a raisin before it gets all dried out and shrivelly. I like it much better. So when you put this in, it should it should do the same thing. Let's see. Oh, so it sank, and then it flows up, and then it's kind of spinning in the water. Grapes are kind of fun to work with too. People also really like to put rice in there. I have never gotten rice to work, but maybe you could try it. Maybe you will have better luck than me and then you can send me a message on how you made rice work because I cannot get it to work at my house. It does not work for me. Or, um, oh, if you have noodles that have a lot of like ridges in them, noodles might work for you. There's a bunch of things you can try, right? So make it a sinking floating experiment and then see if you can make your, mix your vinegar and baking soda to make those carbon dioxide bubbles and see if you can change the buoyancy. See if you can get things that were sinking before to float to the top and better yet to see if they can move up and down in the water, okay? So that is the experiment for the week. Um, have fun with it. Have a great week until we see each other again. So be well and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.